Jesus, the bread of life, you are all we need to nourish and sustain us. Jesus, the vine, grow within us and flourish out of our hearts. Jesus, the living water, may your love and grace overflow in our lives. As we gather, we think of all that you are. As we pray, we remember all that you have done. As we worship, we trust in all you have promised for the future. For all the ways in which we doubt, may we know your faithfulness. For all the ways in which we fall short of your call, may we know your forgiveness. For all the things we refuse to let go of, May we know your grace. Free us from our sin. Free us from our shame and guilt. Guide us to new life with you. The Lord is our shepherd. Our provider and giver of all good things. We lack nothing when we know God's love. God offers us rest and invites us to just be. Even in the silence, we can hear you call out to us that we are your beloved. The Lord our shepherd guides us along the right paths. All the days of our lives were written and mapped out by our creator before anyone ever knew anything of our being in the womb. Even though we walk through dark and challenging times, we can trust that our God journeys with us. You anchor us with your rod and staff, keeping us rooted and grounded. What a comfort to know the Lord's perfect peace. So this week we're going to be looking at some of the I Am sayings from John's Gospel. Um, if you were paying attention, you'll have noticed the three that we're going to be looking at in the opening um, on the opening slide. Today we're looking at Jesus' words, I am the bread of life. So the reading is going to be from John chapter 6. So a few seconds in case you're wanting to find that at home. John chapter 6. John 6 starting at verse 22. The next day the crowd that had stayed on the other side of the lake saw that there had been only one boat there. They also saw that Jesus had not got into the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to, said to you, that you have seen me and yet do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who has sent me, 
that I should lose, lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. Wonderful. Mm. Um, I just love, love, love the sass of Jesus in this, mm. um, calling them out for being fickle and just following him um, because he feeds them. Um, <laughs> and I just love it. Jesus is like, no, don't follow me because I feed you. Don't mm. don't follow me because I'm giving you bread. You know, I just love it. It's sass. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's just a really, it's, it's an, I find it really encouraging mm. in many ways, but also really challenging, kind of almost in equal measure mm. uh, of thinking of those times that, um, I know that I've probably thought about God, asked God for things, wanted things from God, and then said, do you know what, if I see this happen, if this happens in this way, then yeah. I'll do this. Yeah. Almost yeah. trying to bargain with God and mm-hmm. saying, look, I really want you to do this for me, and if you do this, you know what, I'll become a better Christian. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll do some, I'll do X, Y, or Z that you already kind of called yeah. me to do, but I'll only yeah. do it if you if you do this. Yeah, and we see a lot of that, don't we, in verse 30, actually. Um I don't know if the reason's up, but verse 30, uh, where the people are, are basically saying, um, what sign are you going to give? Uh, we need to see it and believe you. So mm. we need to see you perform for us or we're not going to believe you. And obviously this comes after Jesus has just fed thousands of people. Mm. And you think, what more do you need? What more could you mm. possibly need to believe that this God is, well, this man is, is God and mm. is someone special? I mean, it's just fed thousands of people. Come on. Um, and still they want more. They want more signs. They want him to perform again on will. There's this kind of, mm. it, it feels that as you read the gospels, there's a lot of kind of demanding of Jesus, isn't there? To, to heal, mm. to perform miracles, to, to, you know, do things for people. Absolutely. Um, everyone wants proof. Everyone wants a slice of Jesus, really. It's very much got that sense of a vending machine mm. God, isn't it? You put yeah. your prayers in, yeah. you put your thing in and then, God will pop his miracle mm. out at the bottom as mm. long as it doesn't get stuck in the little twirly yeah. thing. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, and, and I think immediately what springs to mind when we read through this is the reading that we had a few weeks ago now, but the reading mm. of Gideon, mm. um, who, who asks of God, well, make the fleece wet and keep the ground dry. Mm. Oh yeah, great, but c- could you do it again, do again, but the opposite? Yeah. And kind of tests God yeah. to try and work out whether what he's heard is from God. Mm. And this almost feels like, a similar thing to that and when we mm, talked about Gideon mm. we talked about the importance of of asking questions of our call yeah and they 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 feel the same but they're quite different as well mm. Gideon was doing that to try and understand his calling to check that he was going in the right direction whereas this is much more trying to say well if you really are god mm. not about mm. if you do this then i mm. then then i'll know that i'm being called to this mm. but it's very much more well if god is real yeah. do this for me well i read some in this morning that might tie in with that actually that um the i am sayings are actually quite quite shocking for people when mm. they hear them back in the day um because obviously all of these jewish people would have been familiar with moses's story and obviously moses says to god who shall i say sent me mm. and god says to moses i am say i am sent you mm. um and here we've got jesus saying i am the bread of life so already kind of equating himself with that with that God that Jewish people would have been familiar with from other mm. other scriptures. Definitely. Um, so there's that kind of shock factor here, isn't there? For for them, as you say, they're they're literally questioning, are you are you God? Because obviously at the time, um, there would have been a lot of prophetic people claiming they were God, doing all sorts of weird and <laughs> wonderful things. Um, and so really, it's only natural, I think, that they would say, well, hang on, are you God? Because mm. you're saying this phrase and you're making a really a really big claim for yourself. Hmm. And, and often we say Jesus didn't tell the disciples for a while that he was God. But if he's spouting, I am the bread of life, hmm. the vine, the good shepherd, all these things, uh, sooner or later, they're going to catch on, hopefully, hmm. Definitely. Uh, that this is someone who's really claiming to, to be God. And that's a, that's a big claim. It is. And this, hmm. again, shows the importance of knowing hmm. at least at least the grand story of Scripture, if yeah. not being able to recite every verse and chapter, which <laughs> if you can, amazing. <laughs> but um, but knowing things like that, and knowing that mm. the Greek word, as you say, I remember being told at college that, that the Greek mm. phrase for I am does directly translate to the, mm. uh, into the Hebrew I am from, from as yeah. you say, Moses. Mm. And and the people absolutely would have known that. The, the one thing they all knew was scriptures. They wouldn't have been able to read them, but they, they'd have heard them mm. and they'd have learned mm. them. Yeah, th- 
the other the other reading and this makes me think about um the verse 30 uh, with the doubting um is thomas mm. um thomas the disciple who's often dubbed the doubter and i always feel quite sorry for him actually because i think in this kind of overwhelming turn of events i'd mm. probably be a bit like thomas um but just that question of what more does jesus need to do to prove himself uh, right you know we see right there human nature's doubting curiosity mm wondering and, and always wanting more um right after jesus has, has died and, and come back to life you've still yeah. got thomas being a doubter yeah absolutely mm. and i think kind of the real affirmation that i see in this mm. is um directly following that i am the bread of life and and recognizing that whoever comes to me will never be hungry mm. whoever believes in me will never be thirsty and that that's obviously not saying that um i mean it, it kind of links towards that challenge of the prosperity gospel, doesn't mm. it? If you believe in God, nothing bad will ever happen. You'll yeah. have everything that you yeah. need. Everything will be sorted. But instead, recognising that, that Jesus here is talking about this kind of, this bread from heaven, yeah. not just talking about mm. um, the bread to eat, but feast on the word of God, as I think he yeah. says in the in the um, yeah. temptations in the desert. And saying that actually this this is how we live, that life in all its fullness of spending time in the presence of God of encountering mm. God, of, of trusting God, of living with God. And we talked a lot yesterday about finding those opportunities to rest with God mm. so that we mm. could be filled up before we're sent out. And I, I think this one very much fits into that with that Definitely. sense of yeah. you come to God and you will be filled mm. so that you can go and live for God mm. in that same way. Yeah, and I feel like there's that little link as well, isn't there, to the Beatitudes. Mm. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst. Mm. Uh, and just that sense in which when we're searching, when we're seeking desperately for more of God, God will bless us. God will fill us up. Mm. God will renew and, and give us more and more of God's self. The, the more we ask for and we seek. Mm. Absolutely. Um, but it's kind of that we talk a lot, don't we, about God always pursuing us when we uh, when we fall away, when we have doubts, when, when we, you know, let life get in the way. God always pursues us. Mm. But there's also that call, isn't there, to kind of, on us to keep pursuing God every single day, keep wanting to know more mm. of Jesus, because there's always more to know of God. Absolutely. And if we hunger and thirst for God, hopefully God will meet us where we are and, and give us that nourishment that we're longing for. Mm, definitely. And and Trevor's just talking in the comments mm. about um, how easy it is to understand mm. pe people having doubts about 100%. the whole Christianity mm. thing. As he says, people... And the, the first disciples saw Jesus face to face, saw miracles <laughs> happen before them. Yeah. And they were still like, yeah, but really? Give us more. <laughs> um, and, and so seeing that actually these days, it can be really hard to, mm. to explain actually what faith means. Mm. And I think this is why stories are so important. Actually, we need to be able to talk yeah. about the difference that God has made to us so that people can mm. see, well, actually, yeah, I recognize that. Mm. Because it, it it's quite hard to tell someone who has no faith or concept of anything. Sometimes it's hard to talk to mm. people that do have faith and say, "Well, actually, um, I saw this healing miracle happen," Bec because it's mm. it's really hard to to get your head around. Yeah. So starting at a point of actually, well, the difference God has made in my life might come from that place, but actually might just be that through difficulty and pain, I've sensed peace. At times of emptiness and struggle, I've I've been filled. And I've known strength and comfort that's beyond me. Mm -hmm. And even just things like that, saying that actually this is this is how God works, this is how God is, then it's a starting point to engage with mm -hmm. people and say, this is the difference God can make for you as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's hard to read this reading without um, recognising as well that the, the challenge of, of eternal life that's thrown in here in a couple of places, um, this kind of promise of eternal life, promise of being with God, promise mm. of being with the father um, I wonder what they would have made of that back back in the day I, I do because mm. I, I I'm kind of someone who's quite open and honest about um you know doubt filled with doubt mm. and wonder as well I suppose a mix of doubt and wonder about what might await us um in this kind of eternal life this eternity with God and mm. and those sorts of things so I'm, I'm someone who's quite uncomfortable about talking about heaven and and the afterlife and those sorts of things and mm. because um, i am filled with doubt and with wonder about it so but but i wonder how they would have responded to this kind of this this promise of eternal life if you if you come to to, to jesus and to the father 
I, I think it's probably some. I mean, I'm I'm speculating here mm. on bits of memories <laughs> that I've read, um, but but it feels like the kind of thing that they would have almost, in some ways, expected, mm. in some ways, not expected at all, because because the the concept that we have of, of going to live in heaven, um, and and that's probably what people think of when when you see this, believe in him and have eternal life. Mm. And actually, personally, I don't see much evidence for that particular concept of going and living in heaven with God. Um, f- for me, it's far more that sense of if we do go to heaven and live with God, it's temporary until mm. we see in Revelation the new heaven and the new earth with God, with earth and heaven together. Right. Um, and and th- there was that sense in, in Jewish culture of, of the afterlife was a place of, waiting mm. and, and Sheol we think of as yeah. as hell yeah. but actually it wasn't it was simply the grave it was a place where there was nothing really there was quiet and, and mm. peace and waiting until there mm. would be this great mm. resurrection and God's people would, would be would be raised mm. and so I think it's very difficult to read these with our 21st century brains without all of that baggage yeah. of yeah. Um, fat babies sitting on clouds playing <laughs> harps <laughs> and actually, it's talking about something yeah. very different. That an eternity spent in the presence of God is is not living on a cloud in yeah. a heavenly place, yeah. but actually is what life on earth should have been at the beginning mm. of creation. So basically, if we think we're overpopulated now, just imagine how overpopulated it's going to be when the new heaven and new earth appear. Mm, indeed. <laughs> But I reckon Great. God's probably got a handle on that. <laughs> yeah, probably, <laughs> yeah. More so than any of us. So. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose it's words of comfort, though, isn't it? I mm. think when, when we read things like eternal life and everlasting peace with God, it, it kind of speaks of comfort, doesn't it? Mm. So we'll and take the, that. And at the very least, it reminds us that, that this is not the end. Mm. That, mm. that God has bigger plans mm. for his creation and yeah. his people. And that's why God's God, because God can think mu- far more... Uh, wonderfully than any of us so he can do more than we can ever ask or Indeed, imagine yeah isn't it yeah. amazing what i don't know where, where what a that's great phrase down. to come up with off the top yeah, of my yeah, head how wonderful that. is that yeah, yeah copyright it. <laughs> okay <laughs> brilliant um it's going to come to a time of prayer together um as always we've got a prayer list with some names um you're very welcome to type any names in the comments um and we will add them to the list for this week um, as we're praying, there's going to be a response. Um, so when one of us say, Jesus, the good shepherd, could you please respond with gather our prayers together and guide us to do your will? So there should be an S there. I'll have a word with my receptionist. Um, gather our prayers together yeah. and guide us to do your will. So, so let's pray. Holy and loving God. We thank you that you are the God who renews and restores us. Who offers us blessings and life in all its fullness. Lord, we pray for this world. For the many people who struggle and do not experience these things. For the many people who have not encountered you and your grace and your love and your power in their lives. Lord, may your church be a shining light in even the darkest places, a place that gathers your creation and feeds your people. Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Gather our prayers together and guide us to do your will. God, we thank you for our journeys with you so far. For the way you have worked in and through our lives. And today as we talk about sharing those stories the importance of stories to help others know more of you. We pray that you will give each one of us the strength, the courage and the opportunities in which we might share something of our faith story with you. We pray that 
in any reasons that we come up with to say that we're not good enough to share our stories that you will tell us that we are worthy and that you will give us the words and work through us and so god thank you for the way you have blessed our lives so far and may we share those blessings with others. Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Gather our prayers together and guide us to do your will. Lord, we pray for your world in this ongoing pandemic. We pray for all of those who have lost loved ones and friends and who have not been able to mourn as they might have hoped. We pray for all of those who are still ill, who are still struggling because of COVID or other illnesses. We pray for those whose mental health has suffered affected by loneliness and anxiety. We pray for those who face financial uncertainty through loss of jobs or loss of business. Lord, help us to see hope. Help us to offer hope. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, gather our prayers together and guide us to do your will. Creator God, you know and love each one of your created people. We read in scripture that the Good Shepherd always leaves the 99 to go and find that one lost sheep. And so today we pray for all of those people who are oppressed, excluded and told they are not worthy, that they are not loved, that they are not welcome. We pray that our churches will be open, inclusive and welcoming safe spaces where all may be able to come and hear the good news. To come and hear that you know and love each one of them. Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Gather our prayers together and guide us to do your will. Lord, we know that we have mistreated your creation. That we have been selfish and taken advantage. That we have caused damage and pain. Lord, help us all to live differently. To live more selflessly to take the challenges and difficulties of climate change seriously and to protect those most vulnerable communities through the way we live each and every day. Lord, may we love your creation just as you do. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, Gather our prayers together and guide us to do your will. And so, God, we lift up the names of those people on our hearts and minds this morning. We pray together for Joan's friends and family, for Eric, for Audrey's friends and family, for Janet's friends and family for Linda and Rob, for Christopher and Rebecca, for Louise, for Alan and Mari, 
for Susan and Nigel, Shirley and Celia, for Pat's family and friends, for Jill, and for Becky. We pray for your perfect peace and your comfort in hand. And God, today at the start of this new week, we also pray for everybody gathered here. If we are feeling lost or lonely, if we are just feeling down, we pray that we will know your presence with us this week. For whatever awaits us, whatever we journey through, may we know that you are right there by our side. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, Gather our prayers together and guide us to do your will. Amen. Amen. Our God who blesses us abundantly prepares a table before us. Keeping us safe from harm, even our enemies cannot take away God's love for us all. You anoint our heads with oil. Our cup overflows with blessings abounding, even when we don't see it, you're working. Surely your goodness and love will follow us all the days of our lives. We want to remain here with you forever. We want to know more of you, Jesus, our Saviour. We trust in you alone, Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Your endless mercy follows us. Your goodness will lead us home. The Good Shepherd leaves the 99 to pursue that one lost sheep. And so as we go on to the rest of the day, may we know that Jesus, our Good Shepherd, pursues us, wants us, knows us by name and loves us more than we could ever begin to imagine. Amen. Amen.